What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Cool Colas here, and you are now tuning into a new episode of the Pro Black Blurred Kingdom Podcast. On today's episode, I'm going to be discussing a topic that has been an issue for a while, but it's probably at its most prominent as an issue at this very moment. This is something that I talked about earlier in the week, and I stated on my Instagram that I was going to be doing a podcast episode on this because this topic is talked about quite a bit. Today, I want to talk to you all about whether or not there is or is not an LGBT agenda. Today's topic is something that, in my opinion, has become more and more controversial over the years. Some people feel like there is no LGBT agenda whatsoever and that there are just a bunch of homophobic people walking around criticizing gay folks for just being present on screen and making unnecessary comments. Some people feel like there is definitely an LGBT agenda and the idea there is television shows are trying to force gayness and other parts of the LGBT community onto people who don't ascribe to it or agree with that lifestyle. Either way, the question remains, is there an LGBT agenda present in television and other media? Everyone is all over the board, strong on one side or the other, about the topic. And I may have subtly made my point in how I felt in some posts I had on Instagram, but I want to give you all my real intentional thoughts here on this podcast episode for you all to hear. One thing you all have to learn about me is, and this is if you don't know this already, I am a big picture thinker to the T. When I see something that goes on, I don't just look at what goes on at face value. I look at the why and for what. I understand that there is a why in literally everything that someone does, whether that person knows it or whether they don't. The thing I look for most is, and this is in any situation, when we're looking at different issues, how does this issue affect the black community as a whole? So everything that I'm going to say today is from the standpoint of how it affects the black community. The truth is y'all, the LGBT agenda, that phrase is a buzzword and it triggers folks and they begin to interpret their definition of what they mean one way or another based off of their stance on it. And I think that there becomes a lot of assumptions that are made because of that. Those who don't believe there is an LGBT agenda only see it as an attack on the LGBT community specifically. And uh, they believe that others are mad at their existence or in some cases pressed about who someone does or does not sleep with. Those who believe it's a thing believe that TV is subtly trying to convince or come after even their children by broadcasting these types of things on television and in movies. And I, I've heard, heard arguments on, on both sides. From my perspective, I do believe that there is an LGBT agenda, but I need y'all to hear me out on this. I think there are multiple agendas going on that isn't just LGBT. I think there is an agenda to push interracial couples. That's why every time that you watch a commercial, you see an interracial couple. I think there is an agenda to push black trauma, which is why you can't even watch a black show now without there being some kind of scene where a black man gets pulled over by the police. And I think that's done because there is this facade that it's meant to show that white producers stand in solidarity with us, whatever the fuck that means. But I think it's really a ploy to let others know that you should support this company because they are committed to diversity 
and that reels people in. And yet and still blacks have not been represented properly yet. I think that there is also an agenda to make the black man look weak. I think that sometimes LGBT is used as a way of even doing that from the white media perspective. I think that there is an agenda to make black women look masculine and overtly strong and independent to a point of frustration and annoyance. But let's go back to the LGBT agenda for a second. I have quite a few problems with this, but I want to break my thoughts down for you piece by piece. The first problem that I see is that there's an issue of population control. And I know that there's a lot of shit to dig up with that one. And some goofy ass people are hearing this and probably saying, well, straight people can be infertile. What about surrogates? Yada, yada, yada. But that's from the mindset of people who aren't seeing the big picture. Population control has been an agenda of white supremacists for quite a while. The idea is that they want to reduce the number of people on the planet significantly and they have multiple ways to do that. The most obvious way of controlling the population is outright genocide. And you can see that this is a thing that happens quite frequently to blacks in American society. It's no secret to anybody. Between police insanity, or what a lot of people like to call police brutality, organ trafficking, the shit that happens to black women in hospitals, and many other methods the need for white supremacy to see population control through is prominent. But overt population control isn't only one piece of the puzzle. The other piece is the covert part. Covert examples of this would be, just to give you some, poisoning our food, making hybridized food that kills us, pharmaceuticals, unclean water, COVID, and I know nobody wants to touch on that, abortions, and even capitalism. And no, and I'll give you an example of how that is kind of covert. Notice as inflation happens, the cost of shit goes up, but wages don't. So younger people especially, they don't have kids or they put off having kids because they can't afford them financially. They really can't afford anything financially. And by the time they can afford them, they don't want to really have them at that point because look at everything that they had to do in order to get to where they needed to get to. One of the biggest arguments I have seen is whether or not gayness is a choice. I believe that there is the possibility of being born gay. But I also believe there is a such thing as socialization of gayness as well, too. What many don't want to hear is that when I speak about covert population control, it includes socializing people to be gay. White supremacists enable the socialization of LGBT in order for people to produce less children. Now, some of you may think I'm reaching, but I would love for you to continue to stay with me as I speak about this. Some may believe that this is a talking point that applies to only white conservatives, but I beg to differ, and I would argue that many white liberals have this belief. At a job of mine, two of the people who I previously worked with, who I'm referring to, made sentiments towards said things, and they identify as white liberals. The problem is these two individuals not only are liberals, but are firm believers in social justice and civil rights. I don't want to say too much more, but I wanted to give you all a visual. One of them said that one of the ways to make this world more effective is by population control, because the idea is that if we are in this world where homelessness and all these other issues of not being able to feed and take care of people exist, then maybe there should be less people on the planet. The other coworker of mine, ex-coworker of mine, also said something similar about how the planet was overpopulated and how that was an issue as well. 
The point I'm trying to make is both of them were quick to make these statements and didn't even bring up capitalism being a byproduct of racism that causes this or the uneven distribution of land, money, and resources to blacks that makes them a big target for this population control and numerous other factors. And the idea that blacks have not been given reparations, which leaves them economically destitute compared to other classes. Ultimately, what it boils down to is the eradication of black families and black family structures because less black families are going to be born with this mindset. Consider the idea even that the this article that came out from the Daily Wire that was literally tired, titled, Mackenzie Scott gives record-breaking $275 million to Planned Parenthood will be used to help black women to get abortions. Did you all listen to that clearly? It's like all of a sudden they are not even afraid to say black women. Whatever happened to women of color or people of color, like everybody's been spamming every five seconds. They made a point to specifically say black women. This is not a coincidence, y'all. Yet and still, all that money that Jeff Bezos' wife has isn't even being used towards something more pressing that could actually help blacks. Mind you, if y'all didn't know this, Planned Parenthood was run by a racist white woman, Margaret Sanger, who had ties to the KKK and had this Negro project and advocated for a eugenics approach to breeding for, and I quote, the gradual suppression, elimination, and eventual extinction of defective stocks those human weeds which threaten the blooming of the finest flowers of American civilization. My point is, these are all cogs to the agenda to control the population in some way, as was done by white supremacists who have anti-black views. People from my perspective are over socialized to be gay because by proxy it would entail the reproduction of less children subtly. I'm not focused on one's desire to be gay, so I want to make that clear, but more so the way they are being used. Think about the movie Avengers Infinity War. The idea of that movie was to subtly hint at population control and what that looked like. Thanos was clearly the villain but he was somewhat seen as a sympathetic villain in some cases. An individual who wanted to make a better world by eliminating millions to save humanity as if he were similar to Adrian from Watchmen. Thanos was ruthless in his plight, even willing to sacrifice his own daughter in the process. At the end of the day, he wanted to be by his lonesome, feeling he was some type of hero who made some hard choices. And what this movie did, y'all, was it subtly divided people with some agreeing with his villainry and others thinking that this was just straight outrageous. Now, I think I need to make this statement because I think we live in a time now where the acts that a villain does are now seen as very complicated and sometimes more understandable than the hero. And because of that, I think we need to have a small discussion on that. What Thanos did falls into that category because of how polarizing it is. Now, I need to say this, though. Personally, I understood and agreed with Killmonger's plight. I think I've told you all that before. I believe that Killmonger was a proxy for Malcolm X by any means necessary. So for me, I understood what he was trying to do, despite the fact that he was portrayed as the villain. Thanos to me was not somebody that I rocked with because for me, he was more so a proxy for white supremacists who want depopulation. And also, and this is something that nobody's going to talk about. Also, he was a proxy for how white supremacists envision themselves as they carry this out. Let me explain what I mean by that. White supremacists do not want to be the faces of this kind of thing. So the idea that Thanos was a purple alien instead of a white person 
who quote unquote did the right thing at a hard cost was exactly how white supremacists see their actions and they want the world to see what they do. Instead of it being a white guy who done it, it's the face of an alien who is to blame instead of it being white supremacy to blame. And what I'm saying sounds a little out there, but there are a lot of people who believe that a lot of the powers that be that we always speak about aren't white supremacists or white people in general. They are some type of humanoids. There's some conspiracy theories going around about it. Like they're some reptilian creatures or whatever. They're, that is actually really a thing. So like, look it up and listen to a, a couple real crazy people and they'll, they'll show you exactly what they think. Anyway, Thanos was a critically flawed villain. And his plight was critically flawed from my perspective. When he did his snap, it's like he, for some reason, was allergic to context and research. He just wanted any and everyone who needed to be sacrificed to just be gone so the deed would be done. And he did that instead of vetting people and looking at the problems that exist to show what was causing this population uh, displacement and how it could be fixed and looking at other methods. This means he was willing to literally snap any and everything away with the possibility of removing the innocent and but also allowing contributors to this problem to potentially stay without vetting it. And he would just throw his hands up and say, well, the universe magically did its thing and got rid of who needed to be gotten rid of. That's lazy and that's flawed. But I hope y'all paid attention to that message and kind of got that because that's exactly what they were trying to portray there. Now, I don't know how many of you all know who Neely Fuller Jr. is, but he is a pro-black author and scholar who vehemently studied and wrote books about anti-black racism, white supremacy and its effect on blacks as well as all other places of activity. Neely Fuller Jr. discussed principles of six racial strategies for racist confusion and one of them was racial tailoring confusion. I believe population control is a long time strategy to confuse folks into believing that this is some type of moral ground of saving the world when this is really an act of white supremacy. Population controllers will do different things to mitigate the black community. And I named some of the ways in how they do it, but they don't plan to eliminate it completely. They just want to mitigate it. So what they do is they kill off some of their own people to cause confusion. And see, the idea here is to maintain white supremacy. They cannot totally eliminate the black community because that would mean that they would no longer have white supremacy. Because they have nobody to be supreme over. Because black people is who they, would, they are being supreme over. And other non-blacks. But non-whites at the same time. Now, the one thing I do want to say, though, is that non-whites who are also non-blacks are just used as buffers to mitigate our power and number and to just go against us to help the white power structure. The reason why this is all done is so anyone, including our own people, can look at people who speak like myself and say, I'm reaching because, look, if it's not just happening to black people. Black people aren't the only ones who are getting killed off. White people are also getting killed off too. So they kill off a few so it doesn't look like black people are the ones who are being attacked. And this creates disbelief because there's confusion. But really it's an act of white supremacy. But let's be real y'all, if white people really wanted us completely gone, they would have done it already because we have too much to offer. So this population control thing is to mitigate the amount of blacks that you see not totally eliminate. Now that brings me to my second point, which is sexual confusion, which Neely Fuller Jr. also talked about. I believe the LGBT agenda is, cr is created to cause chaos amongst blacks within the black community. Heterosexual blacks, so straight blacks, are pitted against blacks in the spectrum. If you allow more black people to be socialized into being gay, then heterosexual blacks are going to feel the powers that be are trying to book break them and their children, especially considering the history of the way that our people were book broken in slavery. And that wasn't by consent. That was by force. Therefore, 
heterosexual blacks react and come down on blacks in the spectrum because of that ideal. I mean, think about it, y'all. It's a badge of disdain to even be a masculine man in this world or to just want a peaceful or submissive woman, let alone criticize someone who isn't or is a part of the LGBT community. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm sick of that shit. It's cool to recognize that black people aren't a monolith until their ideas don't align with those who are quote unquote woke and they want them to believe what they believe. My problem here is that it feels like black folks and only black folks have become the face of the LGBT agenda, or in my opinion, having that force in their community. We don't even talk about whites and Asians and Hispanics, etc. when thinking about the LGBT agenda. Black people are being made the faces of conflict and controversy and showing that polarizing conflict between straight black people and gay black people. And again, this is all done at the end of the day to make straight black men the faces of homophobia. And that's just not fair. I'm, I won't have that shit. Straight blacks have always championed for and celebrated blacks in the LGBT community. I mean, literally, everyone loved James Baldwin in our community who was openly gay. He was a big time black empowerment activist and we didn't say anything about him. And do you know why? Because he was on code. He was on code. And the harsh truth is a lot of these individuals in the LGBT community, the black LGBT community that is, have decided to not make blackness a priority and have allowed the white LGBT community to make them believe that this is part of their identity and it is equal and a lot of times, even for some, more important than their black side. And you'll be able to tell who falls into this category because this is not every black person in the LGBT community, but there are a good handful that believe that. Ask a person in the LGBT community, the black LGBT community that is, what they think is the biggest issue in this world. If white supremacy or anti-black racism isn't the first thing or something similar to that that comes out of their mouth, then you already know what that mindset is like. We have even went out of our way, though, and I'm, I'm just speaking about what us, us straight black people have done. We have went out of our way to support many talented brothers and sisters in the LGBT community and embrace them within our culture. And some examples of this are Luther Vandross, who, by the way, is my second favorite artist of all time underneath MJ. And just think about other like people in the LGBT community like Grace Jones, who was a great and prominent fashion icon who brought a lot of great fashion sense to the community. I could go on and on, but my point is, it's not that, it's not the LGBT part that straight blacks don't support. We just don't support the off coat mindset that doesn't put blackness first, knowing that it's the most prominent issue that, is, that hasn't been addressed in our, in our world. Now, mind you, I don't agree with or see any type of necessity in name calling, tearing down or criticizing blacks who are in the LGBT community because they are our brothers and sisters just as much as us straight blacks are. But I do think that it's the mentality and not seeing the bigger picture that is truly the issue. The mindset that gayness is equally important to the plight of blackness is folly and anti-black if we are being honest. Blacks have suffered exponentially the amount that gays have with no tangibles, laws, or resources, or reparations to show for while still being ridiculed. Yet, Obama's ass, this nigga, has made efforts to make laws for gays. And I'm not mad that he made laws for gays, but my point is that he didn't do nothing for black folks. Nothing. Their struggle could not equate to the struggle of blacks, which is why I feel that this is a prioritization mindset issue. What if someone got into a car accident, right? I'm just giving you a hypothetical situation. What if someone got into a car accident and the car crashed? Let's say the driver has two broken legs and a large cut on his side and it keeps bleeding out like it won't stop bleeding out. And then the passenger who was in the accident as well in the car had only a couple bruises on their arm. 
let's say that someone came and tried to rescue them because they, the car was too damaged for them to get out themselves. And they pulled the bruised passenger out of the car and iced them up and cleaned them up f with the, for the bruising so it wouldn't get affected. But then they just left the driver there to keep bleeding out. That's how championing being LGBT over black looks. And I'm not saying that everybody who's in the LGBT community is making that comparison. I'm just saying that it's, hap it, it's by proxy happening way too much more often than it should. If there is discord and friction created between blacks who identify differently within their own community, then we could never truly be on code with each other. And it lessens our chances to stand together against white supremacy, which is the true enemy here. If you have not realized that the struggle of the LGBT community does not equate to that of the black community, then I'm sorry to inform you. You're a fucking idiot. And I am not sorry about that. Here's my third point, y'all. I believe that LGBT blacks are being used also by the white LGBT community as mascots. They want people outside of their community to be representatives of that community and in a way black LGBT folks become soldiers for the white LGBT community. I say all this because black LGBT folks see this as an attack but what they don't realize is I'm really having their back and I'm giving them accountability the same way I would give accountability to black folks who are cooning and need to get their shit together. I don't like the idea that white LGBT uses and exploits blacks in the LGBT community when there is clear evidence that the community is filled with anti-black racism. Lil Nas X is probably the most prominent example of someone who is in the LGBT community who is being used, but I won't get on him too much. I just wanted to make that point. The real point though is that the white LGBT community has all the way back from slavery had a history of using and abusing blacks in some ways and turning them into caricatures. Tariq Nasheed's documentary, Buck Breaking, if you haven't watched it, very carefully breaks down the history of the white LGBT community and their actions in using and abusing blacks back in the day. We are now seeing the modern day version of that type of exploitation as well. My, for, my fourth point here is a lot of people have issues with the argument about showing LGBT stuff on television. Personally, here are my thoughts on the matter though. These white media companies are trained to study media very well, whether that be social media or television or whatever it is. From my perspective, they have the time and resources to study the behaviors that black people exhibit as well as what we tend to discuss and they try to find a means to be divisive in that regard they know that it will cause discomfort to show these things on television with some more black parents not feeling that because of their traditional views and other more liberal parents who are into acceptance seeing that the problem is the people who have a problem with LGBTism. I, I personally don't want my kids when I decide to have them exposed to too much sexuality one way or another. So that's whether it's seeing uh, that from the straight black community or you know, seeing it from, from like from gays. So I am bothered by seeing a lot of like that on TV. And some people have complained about that because they're saying that it's a double standard. But truthfully, the only discussion that I really want to have with my kid when I have it one day about that is just telling them to protect their privates and not letting others touch it. But outside of that, sexuality just shouldn't be a thing one way or another. So it does bother me from that regard. I think it's weird, though, that there is now an overemphasis on seeing the spectrum on television and even it being taught in schools, yet we have all these courses that could make this shitty-ass education system that we have much better. And a lot of those classes include financial literacy as a requirement, self-awareness, mental health, home economics, like a more extensive version, true black history, not the shit that they try to indoctrinate us with and many other courses. Those are just things that are just totally just wiped and we're sitting here having a debate about whether or not LGBT should or should not be taught in schools. I, and that's why I said it's a prioritization issue. Now, 
here is my fifth and final point as to why I think there is an agenda. And this one is very important, y'all. There is an agenda to suppress what I feel is an issue that is hardly addressed. And I need y'all to stay with me and hear me all the way out on this one. They want to have so much of a focus on LGBT and black shows and want you to forget the issue that I think those who oppose it are not saying. The biggest issue is that we have somehow moved into a society where the need to address proper representation of black LGBT people is a priority and you literally see no few to no straight black couples anymore on television that are functional. I'm going to repeat that so you can hear that. The biggest issue is that we have somehow moved into a society where the need to address proper representation of black LGBT people is a priority and you literally still see few to no straight black couples anymore on television that are functional. And I need to make something very clear. TV programming, television programming, is called programming for a reason. It's meant to program you to see things, ingest them, and to think similarly to the message being conveyed. And a lot of things are done in these shows and movies to make that a thing. One of them, and this is a very subtle thing, is lighting. And how they make certain scenes look more dramatic than others. And one of them is dialogue and all these pep talks that they create between characters. And another thing is the music and how dramatic or anticlimactic that they make it at certain times. That, my friends, is all done on purpose. And I know this from the perspective of being a storyteller and a writer and knowing our job is to captivate the viewer. The only difference between television and a book is that when it comes to storytelling, the technology that's used in television gives the message that's created a boost in the favor of the storyteller. Notice though, as far as comic shows go, there are literally no, and I mean no, civil, loving, or functional relationships between masculine, heterosexual black men and feminine, heterosexual black women in all comic shows and in most regular sitcoms. Even if there is a relationship between a black man and a black woman, there is always something strange added to it. Either the black man is angry or overbearing or feminine, the black woman is annoying and overbearing like she can't be feminine or the relationship is chaotic and unappealing. And if not any of those things, some other weird element is thrown in there. I think when our people hear LGBT agenda, a lot of us get frustrated because we feel that yet again the needs of straight black folks in America have been bypassed and overlooked and that is not by accident the idea is that when white media creators make these series that and their black soldiers who have sold out that is they are purposely making the relationships between black men and black women who are heterosexual unappealing toxic and unstable, therefore making that seem unattractive or simply non-existent to our children. Think about all the black kids who want to see images of themselves when they watch television. They soak that up like a sponge and only mimic what is given to them. So now you must ask the question, why have stories that show black men and women, like straight black men and, 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 and black women, functional couples with a masculine black man and a feminine black woman, why have they been few in number while the homosexual ones have been plentiful? Now, I want to make something else very clear for y'all. I have no problems with blacks in the LGBT community. As a matter of fact, I have gone out of my way many times in the past to defend that community and tell people not to be disrespectful to them. And you can go back on my social media, like on my Facebook, like years and years ago, I told people to, you know, just to kind of lay off of them and stuff like that. One of my best friends is actually gay. And he even publicly stated that he believes there's a gay agenda. I mean, 
He's not the only one. I'm not saying that because I, I got the gay friend who said that. There have been a lot of other people from the LGBT community who have spoken out against the LGBT agenda. Even Flame Monroe went on the Breakfast Club, and she's transgender, and clearly open about it, has slammed the community for perpetuating this issue. Go watch it if you don't believe me, go watch it. She literally lives and experiences what it's like to be transgender and has recognized the, that the issue is a problem. And this brings me to my next point. What is the difference between being LGBT and an LGBT agenda? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait a, a little bit on that one. The issue is one, two, three. Agenda. Agenda equates to personal goals, which has some by any means necessary mixed in it. This means that there is some heavy force going on. I have the mindset and beliefs that I will not be forced into anything that goes against or simply does not align with the path that I am on, as should anyone who is ambitious about their beliefs. You have to sit back and you need to ask the question, why would a company like Disney Plus be committed to an LGBT agenda? And they, why would they admit it? And I'll break that down in another video, but I just wanted to make this point that they, that that Disney Plus literally has committed to saying that they are trying to perpetuate an LGBT agenda. Why would a company like that, that has an anti-black history and still isn't committed to even creating content with black men and black women together who are heterosexual, masculine and feminine respectively, and having functional relationships. Why would they all of a sudden be adamant about making 50% of their characters LGBT and then put a black woman as the leader of the project behind that? It doesn't add up to me. Why all of a sudden would Disney turn to altruism and acceptance unless not for anything but knowing that this is something folks will buy into so they can keep their cash flow going and knowing that they can carry out their own agendas, killing two birds with one stone. Y'all need to stop taking shit at face value and learn how to actually critically think about some of these things. My point is I will be damned if I champion something for the benefit of Disney Plus's hidden motives or to be bullied into thinking something is wrong with that level of force. Agendas add a shady layer of not knowing if you go along with something you align and that feeling of being forced to see this all the time. This is, unless you obviously turn your TV off. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to make my own content because black people for too long have fallen into the trap of listening and following any information given to them and much of it is indoctrination. Nothing given to us happens by coincidence. Plus, we all should maybe be doing more reading than watching television anyway, if I'm being honest. Especially reading, because a lot of y'all don't research a lot of shit, which is why y'all believe the stuff you all believe. Being LGBT is okay, and I want to make that clear. I feel being LGBT is okay. And even having LGBT characters in a show or in a series is okay. But the pandering and the overstimulation and portrayal of LGBT characters is a slap in the face to the straight black characters and relations that are never given justice or yet or have yet to be properly portrayed and an exploitation of the black LGBT community to be used as a weapon against other members of black society. Again, the problem here is overstimulation. Over stimulation and force. By the way, this is all a balance issue, y'all. These two problems can't be equated and certainly won't be equal if you raise black LGBT representation to 50%. I stand with LGBT 
brothers and sisters in the black community, but I don't stand with white supremacy agendas and the coonish ways of those who go along with the pandering. All right, y'all. So that's what I got. Those are my thoughts. That is what I think about this whole topic. I had to give you all a slice of perspective a lot of people aren't seeing. And I want you all to continue to listen to the things that I come out with in my podcast episodes and hear what all I have coming next. Anyway, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this content and you found this useful and you found this helpful and it gave you a decent perspective on how to think about the issue. I have a lot more content to come. As I've said before, I have new content every Friday, so I hope you tune in and enjoy it with me. I will have, again, more topics that are going to be pretty interesting and some probably as controversial as this one coming soon. So I want you all to stay tuned. Anyway, I hope y'all have a good rest of y'all's night. I have some things to take care of and I will be talking to you all later. Peace.